<laughs> yeah. Welcome uh, to another installment of uh, Exploring Consciousness with the Earth Nouveau. And uh, yeah, we're going through lots and lots of changes. Show us your crystal, Tanya. So this is, Ma this is Malachite from the Congo. And Malachite is a wonderful stone for energy clearing. And so as you look at this Malachite, you can feel the energy of it now just spinning through your toroidal field, cleaning up the energy debris, helping you clean and clear what's not serving your greatest good anymore because it's all coming up to the surface now for feeling and for healing and for clearing. So uh, this, this stone from polished malachite, because um, malachite is actually very toxic when it's not polished. It has to be sealed. So, and interesting, I just was reading a book called uh, The Winged Pharaoh about a woman who's remembering one of her past lifetimes in ancient Egypt. And she was talking about crushing malachite and putting it on the eyelids for, um, <laughs> for makeup. Yeah, so... No wonder, no wonder some of those people didn't live very long. They're using lead in their makeup. And, but I was just talking about the Congo. The Congo River and that whole area of West Africa is just really, since the equinox, has had a huge energetic opening. I feel just a huge wave of like the Garden of Eden returning there. And, and how do you, how are you getting that information? Is it through dreams or is it just uh, something you, you perceiving? Uh, well, it's something I'm perceiving and I can't remember how, how that information came through. Honestly, information comes through for me in all different kinds of ways in dreams in um, like if I'm watching, watching something on TV and I see that area, or if I look at a map, it's almost like if I look at a map, of the world, which I do often because I'm always wondering, oh, what's energetically going on here? It's almost like I can see, I don't know, like a burst of light, like coming from that whole West Africa area. So I so, think- so uh, This is actually a very cool little tip, isn't it? You know, for people to, if, if they want to look, learn a bit more about remote viewing and getting into that kind of uh, perceiving, you know, to actually look at a map. I know it sounds very obvious, but actually, I don't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can look at a satellite map, and that will, you know, it will show you the land, right? It shows you what the land looks like. And, I mean, of course, you know, even 10 years ago, we didn't have the capabilities that we have today to, you know, really be able to see. And, I mean, who knows how much is actually blocked out, <laughs> you know, that you can't see. But um, yeah, I think for me, uh, I can tell when I look at a map, if I zoom in on something and then zoom out, I can see how energetically it's connected to different points. You know, if it's, if it's um, energetically being suppressed or bound or blocked in some way. Yeah, and that's just one of, you know, my gifts to yeah. be able to look at Earth like that. And then even if you do, this this is already useful, if, even if you do perceive the blockages, you can then go beyond those blockages and actually start using your advanced imagination, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This is what I've been, I've been, uh, um, I work a little bit like you say, you know, there's certain things I find something or I see something in a, in a, in a TV show or, you know, whatever I'm watching or whatever somebody's saying. And then it just leads me to the next step, you know, and I, I was looking for, you know, come on, something else must be coming in here where, you know, and it's been for a long time, nothing came in really um, that got me excited again. And um this morning, I've just uh, uh, signed up on an alchemy course. I'm doing a, a, an alchemy, a seven module alchemy course. And I was super excited about this. And 
what I love about this, it's, it's seven modules, it's um, alchemistic philosophy, spiritual alchemy, everyday alchemy, magic of the metals, laboratory alchemy, uh, spagyrics and healing, and then the master alchemist. And why I like that is because remember we were talking about the shaman becoming the alchemist and the warrior becoming the philosopher. And I've been working with it. This has been coming through a lot of late in the last couple of months and weeks. And now I, I, I started reading a, a, the Emerald Tablet book. And that just really, what, what I liked about it, it, it's almost like it gives you the umbrella. It gives you an umbrella, you know, where everything comes together and all the different contrasts, you know, and from all the different walks of life, you know, it's not just the spiritual exploration, you know, it actually brings in the metals, it brings in the healing, it brings in the herbs, it brings in all of that, the science and, you know, so I'm really excited about this. So Wonderful. that's what I'm looking into, you know, at the moment. And that's got my attention. And yes, of course we are alchemists, we know that, but, you know, learning is remembering. We know that too. And we are everything. So it's it's good to start somewhere. What what ignites that next fire in you? That new fire, that secret fire, that kind of thing. After um after I was attuned to Reiki, actually I think it was even before that, I started um I don't know, I searched, I guess, something on the Mayan calendar and it led me down, you know, a rabbit hole that that totally opened opened me up. And I found this website called Crystal Links. And it's this lady in New York and she has she has like a, almost like a glossary, right, where she has all kinds of things, you know, spiritual. She talks about different, you know, esoteric um you know, all, all kinds of things. And she does like a daily report on oh, what's going on with the weather and the sunspots. And she's a medium and a psychic. But um, going down that rabbit hole, what one of the things that happened to me, you know, and then I found Reiki and was attuned to Reiki, but uh, Thoth was the first being who came in and started like working with me and talking to me. And I found the Emerald Tablets. She actually had a copy of them on her site and that was a huge activation for me you know and that was i don't know when i started this journey you know over 20 years ago so i think it's interesting that you're you know going through them now and um and i think maybe it's time for me to revisit it's it, this is the thing remember you know what's happening at the moment you see this with people people who have disappeared from your life keep coming back and even if it's just in the dream now, the most mm -hmm. significant, significant dream the other day, and I dreamt about a lady, a, you know, a lady now, who went to school with me. And I had, the name was absolutely, and I could have never, ever remembered that name if you would have asked me. I don't even know why she came in, but she came in fully with the name in association with something else. Uh, and I do remember her blue eyes. Amazing. Place. And I thought, what the hell are you doing, my dream? So just somebody come, and this is, I, I did the Thoth journey. Uh, the book that I'm reading now, I bought 10 years ago. I just never read it. <laughs> I bought it, I put it on the, on the, um, on the shelf. Um, I found the Thoth, um, I found, you know, I have, I don't know how many ibises I have in my home. You know, um, what, what do you call this? Um, hold on. I can't remember the name. There's a new, new words I need to learn, you know. I can't remember now. That uh, the Hermes uh, staff, basically, you know, with the... The Caduceus. Yeah, the Caduceus, exactly. The double, the double serpent, with, you know, around, with, yeah. Yeah, and I got a pendant with, with Thoth with it, you know, which I bought ages ago. And then like, okay, that's nice. Yeah, I put it in the, in the thing. And now it's like, oh, my God, uh, wherever I look now in the house, these things coming in now because the time is now, you know. Well, isn't that Caduceus also like a symbol of the Kundalini rising in the body? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, it's actually, it's the, call it the, the Hermes staff and it starts, it's, 
all the seven levels of transformation yeah all the seven chakras you know the glands listen listen to i i just uh, listened to matthias the other day that one thing i needed to look at you know he was he was linking all the glands the different glands the seven glands to the chakras you know and that's been coming back up again so it's it's almost like um you find things now find things find you and even if you have found them before they now starting to come in with a different level of significance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is so, 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 so important that, you know, this old paradigm thinking of, oh, I'm too lazy. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I just buy things, but I never use them. I just don't, don't ever do this to yourself. There is a reason why you buy something and you might not have to read that book right away. You might have to read it in 10 years time. You know, that's why this is such a good question to ask yourself, is now the time? And again, there is, it's the acknowledgement. What, you know, it, it's maybe a future you saying, hey, buy this now. You, okay, I'll buy it. You know, you get the impulse, yeah, I'll buy it. And then you have, okay, well, actually not thinking that the future you wanted to buy it because in 10 years time, you're going to look at it, you know? So it's, it's really that to start, and I think this is also uh, reminding us to cultivate that multidimensional thinking, right? The multidimensional understanding, this is what it is. But what is the thing? We have to get out of judgment. Is now the time? No, mm. and keep it. And sometimes get rid of it, you know? That, that kind of thing as well. Hi, Arminia. Hi, Jen. Hi, Lana. We're just, we're just talking about, you know. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> at, yeah, and all the changes. So so how are you, you guys doing? I mean, every week now is so different, right? Every morning you wake up and you're a different person. Every moment. <laughs> yeah, tell us, Alfredo, you've been going through quite a bit of stuff, right? Oh, so much. It's been, <laughs> it's been so much. It's ridiculous. Um, I just, I've been... I just feel like I've been because I know myself like I know I just speak or whatever but now when I speak I'm just I'm just more observant of what I'm speaking so just slowing down kind of slowing down it's more like someone will ask me a question and I'll pause for a second because there's always an automated response like oh yeah this oh yeah that it's like just taking a pause a second before I give the automated response and just go back to my heart for a second. It's like, you know, just acknowledging what am I, and what am I saying? Am I speaking from my mind? Am I speaking from my heart? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I feel like my mind is always like, Oh yeah, I'm neutral. I'm in the heart. I'm this, but really it's just like my mind that's running. It's making me believe that I'm in those spaces and the awareness has been, like increasing so much that I've just been retreating, you know, like I think I had a few moments, like a few days ago, where I had a, a greater awareness of everything I've done in the past. And I looked, you know, I was, and I went back, I was looking at all the stuff I posted on Facebook. I was like, Oh my gosh, I just, I had so much shame and so much like judgment about it. I was like, oh, I just got to get off Facebook. Cause I'm just, I'm losing it. You know, I'm just, I'm just caught up in my mind. I got to check my Facebook. Got to do this. Got to do that. And just, just letting my mind just run me, run my life, you know? So I just, I'm just trying to, no, I am, I am. I just staying in the heart consciously. And I, I don't, I realized too, like, cause for the longest time I had been through, I had to move out of my partner's, or I, well, I moved in with my partner and I had to live with her family. And it, it brought up a lot of, a lot of stuff in me. Cause it just, you know, in a compacted house with, you know, 10 Hondurans, Mexicans, you got all the TVs going on, cell phones going on. It's just like intense. So I would go in there and just like, I had to be very disciplined and diligent because her dad was, you know, had the anger frequency and I had my own anger frequency I was dealing with. So you know, when we get together, it's like, oh man, here we go. <laughs> just had to consciously, intensely breathe into my heart. Cause I remember you meant, I remember you mentioned it like a week or two ago, like, oh, you don't have to breathe deeply. But for me, it was always the biggest, helper and a sister for me because I can't 
given my situ- you know, I, I don't want to live myself by the situation or circumstance, but living in the house, like I had to consistently, consciously breathe deeply into my heart because the in- energies were so intense. And I don't want to, I just want to be a, more aware of my heart space, you know. I, I, I'm just going back to the, you know, the potency of simplicity because I feel like I've been overcomplicating my journey because I like, I love to consume information. I'm addicted to it like a crack, like heroin, just like I got to have the information. I got to have the knowledge and just ser- searching, seeking, just always like gathering more knowledge. And then I realized you know, I've been listening to Linda a lot because mostly just her and a little bit of Andrew here and there, but like just her, she's just constantly reminding me of that, that heart space connection that I feel like I haven't been like, <laughs> I haven't been fully in my heart, you know? Um, and it's just returning me back to the simplicity of the heart connection and really all these things I think I need to do, like, Oh, I got to get the kids to school. I got to do this. I got to, I'm going to be late. Like, it's like just, and that's why it took so long for me to get my kids ready. Cause like my mind was like, Oh, I got to hurry up. I got to do this. I couldn't, you know, and I was like, Oh, but my heart is just like, just, it's, I got this intense energy. Like I was like tripping on mushrooms. I was like, Oh, the emotions are so intense. Like I just, I can't just take it, you know, slow down off right. Or just sit down and just sit there with the kids and, and just sitting there with them. They're just, they're just all over me. They want to love me. And I just feel this discomfort in my heart. I couldn't even take it to school. I was just like, I'm just going to sit here. If they get to school late, I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to, I got so much emotions just swarming through me and, and the expectations and seeing the mirrors and (laughs) I call it the hall of the mirrors and messengers. Like before I react or automatically to something, it just like, you know, observing and feeling what people are sending at me. It's like, just seeing that with more awareness or feeling it with, feeling it with more awareness, not so much seeing. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on. Summed up. <laughs> but, um, and then I've been thinking too, like why I go to the earth Nouveau gatherings. I always it's like, why do I go? Like, what do I, like, what is, why am I truly going? Like, and there's, there's a something about it. Like a, I've been, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I'll, I'll let someone else take the talk and stick. I just wanted to express my feelings. Well, I, I just have to say, Alfredo, that your energy is very appreciated here. So thank you oh. for showing up and, and being present and sharing. Because I thank think you, there's Tanya. so many people, you know, myself included, who want to hear and need to hear what you have to say and what you're going through. You know, you are... You are having a beautiful experience, right? Like so many other of us star seeds and, you know, soul, soul angels, beings of light and human bodies, right? We're all digging through the mud and, and all those emotions, they're just coming to the surface, you know? So just so you know, you're not alone in that. Thank you, because I've been judging myself intensely because I realized like all this mind mind nonsense is bringing everywhere like all the information i'm consuming i'm just lost in my mind everywhere i go like lost in my mind coming here sometimes and then whatever i'm consuming information wise or frequency wise or whatever i'm just bringing it here it's like oh i gotta be more responsible with this. like i don't know I, i've been judging myself quite a bit because i'm kind of ashamed of you know the stuff of the past and just kind of come to terms with it and I just I want to apologize for whatever energies I might have projected upon other people because I just be more aware and then the, the awareness responsibility thing hand in hand, I, you know. Yeah. I feel that is the program that we have all, all has the judgment and then, you know, regret and guiltiness, all those judgments that have been really seated in our subconscious mind. And the other thing I, I, for my feeling it, for myself, many times we uh, get that from other people. It's not really necessary, it has to be from ourselves. 
<laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I think this this past week for me myself, I mean, kind of interesting because I I, I don't know if you let, um saw the Android show from fr uh, last Thursday. I I miss it and I I just was watching the recording for for some reason there was two two of the caller that he recommended to do the uh, chess play chess. And for some reason, the uh, open on myself, like, uh, you know, always I love the, the game, but I never was able to practice it because, you know, all my life have been like a challenge in some way, you know, survival mode. Um, and I went myself to one of those stores and I bought one of those uh, chess uh, game for $5. <laughs> And I put it in my living room. It was just, uh, and sometimes uh, I start like moving just one, one of the piece and it's giving me like, and I felt that it was like a, something happened because suddenly in the store, I don't know, um, I saw this um, this uh, notebook. I said, oh my God, that's a very nice notebook for me to make my notes, you know, the spiritual note, because I was very in tune with these characters, uh, their air, Urban, uh, urban than the last urban than avatar and i when i i remember when i was in very difficult situation i started watching those cartoon and completely changed my you know my feeling my emotion uh my strength and then i when i got it and then uh, uh suddenly i got an invitation from uh um Astio from the tour i can you the uh, Sheila, um, Sheila, Sheila, um, I can't remember her last name now. Um, anyway, she, she channeled the tour in Kenya. She had been for almost for five decades. She was the one that helped um, um, Abraham hit, uh, the one that the, the Esther hit. Any case, uh, they sent me an um, invitation for become like a, in a 12 week um, um, a psychic uh, program. And it was so, I was thinking about, I cannot be putting more things in my plate. <laughs> and then when I was thinking to send an email to say thank you, but I don't think I can do it. One of their members called me in my phone. <laughs> Oh my God, this means I had to go in this invitation because it was so a coincidence. Just a few minutes, I was thinking to send an email and somebody from then called me and asked me if it was okay, how I was doing, if I would be considering to come in to join them. I said, wow, <laughs> this was like a direct message because I'm, they had like a, they planning to have a trip to Egypt and I always be fascinated to be able to go to Egypt. And that's why I get back to connect with these people. And then it suddenly <laughs> I felt after I got this uh, chess game, it was like a, my energy shift. And like the whole week having like, a, okay. I, you know, like you text in the water and then you would say, it's okay to go there. <laughs> it's not deep enough, you know, that having that mood the whole week. <laughs> Any case, that's, that's all my feeling for this week. <laughs> And, and thank you so much because last week I felt that, you know, the meeting that we had, everybody participating in for me, like, you know, to boost myself to, you know, keep going no matter what. Thank you, Herminia, for saying that. And I, I just want to, I just want to say that this is what we, this group is all about, right? Mm -hmm. This group is not to portray ourselves as teachers because we all are. Mm -hmm. This is to create a safe space for each other from a place of interest, genuine interest on what's going on. How can we inspire each other and move on through those, move through those energies. Mm -hmm. and, and this is part of, you know, what Alfredo was saying, you know, there's so much information coming in and mm -hmm. we have to really, this information is coming in. Now, lots of us have lost a lot of, through the separation of density, has, have lost a lot of people around us. Mm -hmm. Many people we can no longer have certain conversations with. Now, that information, look at it from, a, like, you can use information 
similar to food, that food's coming in, you're ingesting it. And if you're not processing it with other people in a forum where you can share without uh, being judged, without the walls coming up, you're going to start becoming constipated and um, you're going to gain weight, you know, and things like that. Mm. Um, because there's a lot of air coming in at the moment. The air element is all about communication. It's all about new information coming in. And air sits behind the solar plexus in the diaphragm. Yeah, this is why the breathing is so important. And air, the element, is all about communication. Yeah, and all of us here have a lot, have a, have a big element of air because we are all teachers and teachers need to share the information. Like Alfredo said, when it all comes in, it becomes overwhelming. We have to share it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just want to blurt it out. And if we choose the right forum to just blurt it out, well, that's absolutely fine. Nobody here is going to judge. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're all looking in the mirrors, we are learning something, we're all taking bits and pieces that works for us, we leave the rest, and there's an honoring in this group. And also, we are, we are moving away from um, the judgment, we are moving away from the domination and control, we're moving into that new element of the the second fire, the sacred fire, the secret fire, into the imagination and it's gone the imagination part is gonna be it's gonna be wacky it's gonna be weird yeah we have to allow ourselves to be weird to come up with stuff that nobody else has ever come up with yeah and you know when when tanya talks about the congo and what she's seeing lots of people will think well i'm not seeing that what's wrong with me or what's wrong with her no, there's nothing wrong with her. There's nothing wrong with you. This is just something she is gifted at and she is looking at. Yeah. And she is, you know, mature enough to throw that out because it will bring sparks to people. Oh, I haven't looked at, you know, the globe. Why don't I do that too? Not from a place of competition or hierarchy, but from a place of inspiration. And that is part of the work. It's part of that philosopher's stone that we are starting to talk about. We're talking about creating a philosopher's stone. And I will be starting to talk more along those alchemical uh, as I'm learning more and finding the words for it. Yeah, I have the energy, but I probably haven't got the words for it. Now, we are transforming ourselves into a diamond body. You've heard that, right? So we're coming from, think of the coal being transformed, being distilled, being fermented, all that into the diamond body. Now, you could look at that as the philosopher. You are becoming your own philosopher's stone, as the alchemists would uh, call that. Now, all those stages, when I look at the seven different stages of transformation, I'm familiar with all of them, and I can see myself go through them, not in a linear way, yeah? Absolutely not. I might be in the distilled phase right up there where I'm perfectly understanding the spirit and the soul, and all of a sudden I'm back down in the root chakra, you know, uh, working with self-preservation issues, it's nice to be able to, to give it a linearity, to dissociate so that we can become those observers. We, as, as Alfredo says, we are becoming the entangled and the unentangled observer at the same time. The implicate and the explicate order at the same time, because this is what the Philosopher's Stone is all about. This is what that integration is all about. And as we're distilling ourselves down to the essence of, you know, this is the soul, this is spirit. I, to be honest, I've never made a distinction between spirit and soul. I didn't get it. All of a sudden, I get it. All the soul integration, all the avatar, the I am avatar work, that is the soul. That is different to the spirit. It's not the same. It's funny you say that, Martina, because only a couple of days ago, I figured it out too. <laughs> 
I was like, the difference oh between the spirit and the soul. So now, yeah, Lana, and look, of course, we all know everything is the same, just like the phone is the same as, you know, the, the philosopher's stone, and every, we know that, but we don't have to go down this road anymore. It's really nice to look at that. Once you've understood that what the avatar integration is, then now you can say, okay, now I'm this vehicle, I'm this vessel now. Now I can become the conduit to bring the spirit through that is beyond the capacity. To, it's beyond consciousness. It's beyond consciousness. I, you know, for me, in the last couple of weeks, for me, consciousness was everything, includes everything, judges nothing. Great. Now it's becoming very clear that there is something beyond consciousness, beyond time and space. That already was, you know, beyond the ocean of awareness. That's the spirit. Now we're bringing that in. And as we're bringing that in, we have to let it out because we are not, as Alfredo says, all that information that we're bringing, we are not supposed to store it in our bodies. It will create yeah. frozen energy. It will create stuck energy. We have to let it go again. And how do we let it go? By talking to people about it. But let's talk to people who want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> the people don't want to hear it because then the wall comes up and then it, it it hurts you it literally will start hurting your physical vehicle when you start talking to people who are not going to get it there is also of course the mechanism of the technology itself that says that that won't allow you to talk anymore yeah but then Alfredo just gave us this, this perfect example. When you get go and put yourself in, a, in an environment that is so not conducive to the resonance that you are, you have to work super fucking extra hard to maintain that hard intelligence. Yeah. Now, yeah. part of the sovereignty uh, teaching is to not put yourself in there anymore. So what did you do, Eve? He moves out. Well, how does he get better than that, right? Moving away from situations where we know, because it's no longer forcefully teaching people, force feeding them information. No. Ha honor them for where they at. It's not a kindness to them, and it certainly is not a kindness to yourself. Alfredo. I know you're good. It's it's. It's one of those things we did move out, but at the same time, I realized we moved out on, you know, on her intentions. So all the unhealed traumas that, you know, she didn't deal with in the house, they came over to when we moved out. <laughs> so it, it even some of my stuff too. So it was, we did move out and just more clarity, but then one step still, at still time. acknowledging the, the traumas that are still there too. I thought, oh, we got it all figured out. We're out of there. It's good. But then the traumas are still there. We're still. You know, Alfred, choice, choice creates, right? You've made one choice. Now yeah. you have the next level of possibilities. Oh, okay. Well, there's still something that we need to look at. Well, one, yeah. thing, one thing is to ramp up your non judgment. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Ramp judgment. Now, I'm speaking from experience. There's another level there of where you have to step into allowance. Because you see, the thing is, we have a capacity to step into a sovereignty level where, yes, of course, you can leave, you can move, yeah, and do your own thing. But Often what happens is you just get yourself in, an, in the next situation, yeah? There is that willingness of letting people go, yes, but there's also an awareness, is this really creating more for me if I do that? Or is there something else I can look at? What is creating more? And you can ask the question, is it creating more if I leave her or is it not, yeah? And that's a daily choice. I've been with my partner for 24 years and I'm still choosing him on a daily basis. It's just a choice, yeah? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And with that in mind, it's just a choice. You choosing it. And then the judgment falls away. 
you know what I mean? And then also there, there's other ways of doing it. There's also saying, okay, well, you know, now I need my own space. And then create yourself a situation where you have that space. Maybe you need to go for a walk more often, you know, you, and things like that. There's little bits and pieces to start off with. Um, and then I think what often happens is you will be guided or she will be guided into, into whatever is required. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, surfacing but, anyways. So. Yeah. <laughs> Can I uh, um, uh, no. jump in here for a sec? Yes. Um, I know I can, when I was um, coming in the room, uh, Tanya was talking about something about Africa. And um, <clears throat> it's funny that on my search bar, there's the continent of Africa that's suddenly appeared in the search bar. And so I just clicked on it and I saw that uh, today is uh, Africa's day. So I wanted to share that. <laughs> but I was also wondering if Tanya, if you don't mind, I know that you said it and it's in the recording, if you wouldn't mind sharing what you were talking about, uh, you saw in Africa for the rest of us who came in late. Um, sure. So I was talking about the Congo because I got this fabulous piece of malachite from the Congo. So here oh, it is pretty. again for those who haven't seen it yet. It almost looks like a little bear face on it, I think. <laughs> it does. But what I, what I was saying is just in the last, I guess since the summer, um, since the equinox, really noticed a, a, a huge, I don't know, like awakening of energy coming from that Congo, that West Africa area. You, you know, it's almost like the new Garden of Eden is re-arising from that space. So that's what I was talking about. You know, I'm just feeling like so much light coming from that energy. Mm -hmm. And and uh, yeah, it's just really exciting. I mean, I'm seeing it other places, you know, too, but it feels like it's really, really rising there. So I think it'll be interesting oh, okay. to see sort of what starts happening energetically, uh, uh, you know, on the physical plane there also. So the reason I'm, I'm very curious as to what you were saying, um, and I'm glad I caught the, um, when I came in, um, because now I can share this with you. There is a, um, a woman um, on YouTube um, who has um, been doing clearings on Africa recently with a couple of other guys and they have made their um, their recording public so anybody can hear the recordings and I was following and I think they did about three different um, <clears throat> long uh, couple hours of uh, recording while they were doing the uh, clearing of the continent itself um, it started out with uh, one of the guys, he was actually clearing his ancestral karma. But then one thing led to the next and to the next because apparently, you know, he has a um, strong uh, root connection to the continent itself in different places. And, you know, since we are born so many times over, we've lived in these places um, many times. I even believe that I've had a lifetime somewhere in um in africa as well i was told um but it's interesting that you are actually um separate from them you're actually seeing uh new energies coming out of the continent and i'm i'm relating that perhaps to what uh the clearing that they did on the continent so now it's beginning to show itself to others and um, if anybody would like I'll, I'll share the link of those recordings so you can listen to it um, at a later point uh, what they did because I found when I was listening to them it was very fascinating um, how they were opening the spiritual courts of equity and they were bringing in all these uh, different ancestral lines and um, even the 15 multidimensional beings who were involved in so much that uh, went on on our planet and in the solar system. 
Um, all these beings were brought into the uh, spiritual court of equity, including some of the Anunnaki's and, you know, uh, different beings um, were brought in. Some of them were not very happy, of course, <laughs> but um, uh, I find it all fascinating now that you're saying this. And I'm real pleased to hear that information from you. Thank you. And yeah, yeah. One of the things I think is really interesting that feels like it's going on, it's certainly going on here in San Francisco, and it feels like it's going on there too, is that the the contracts with the beings, the earth beings, you know, like the fairies and the unicorns and the dragons and, you know, the etheric giants, all those contracts are getting renegotiated right now. So there's, it's like those beings have an opportunity to co-create on a more conscious level of like what they want to see on the land also. So, yeah. you know, their codes and, and, you know, are coming, coming in like in a, in a stronger way as earth moves into that higher density. Well, well, we're living in the times um, of uh, the great Dreamtime awakening, and we're here to resolve all the past, um, you know, karmas that took place. We're finally wrapping things up, so we're resolution. We're here for the resolution of universal karma. So they got to come up. And I remember um, uh, last year, I think, when Andrew was doing some shows, I think he was chatting with Monty, I believe. Um, where they were talking about the uh, the inner art guys and um, how they got to deal with their shit now, <laughs> the way he put it, uh, after being of uh, living there for like four hundred thousand years, you know, it's, for them it's one lifetime, for us it's like a gazillion lifetimes, but they've got to deal with their um, shenanigans that you know they were involved in so i find all this quite fascinating right now and yesterday i was listening to um, a recording that was um, uh, with greg braden that he did with another guy um, and they were talking about this particular uh period um i think that they said it's it's uh it started at, in my calculation about around 1995 maybe and it 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 goes on for like about 30 years and so uh i think we'll, we we are in the process um of the transition period they were talking about and it will go on for another maybe about another eight years in my calculation but we remember andrew said that we are in the event, we are living the event right now. And I think he said that the event started in 2014. But uh, Greg Braden and the other guy, they were based, he was basing the calculation based on what the Mayan calendar um, was saying as well. So they were bringing all this different information in and saying that we are in the event and we are living through the hardest uh, times and you know we have to go through the motion of all this turmoil and emotional stress and and we can ourselves can experience this uh turmoil and stress on a daily basis as well um but some days will be good and some days will be horrible you know so i find all this interesting and fascinating So that's what I wanted to share for the moment. Thank you, Lana. Thank yeah. you, Lana. Yes, absolutely. And this is why I think, you know, the invitation is to slow down, to really slow down. Like Alfredo said as well, slim, simplicity, back to simplicity, whatever that means to you. I mean, I see myself slowing down even more that I slowed down. And I sometimes have to remind myself as I'm slowing down in the normal reality, I am speeding up 
in the unseen because everything has to be in balance and you know acknowledging who i am i have come here to connect to mediate all the different realms we all have come here as forerunners to do that so if you're slowing down do not beat yourself up i had this conversation with my mom this morning you know i said as long as you're breathing i don't care how old you are i don't care what kind of stage you're in what kind of state you're in you are contributing it's it's the level of awareness that is required where you're going to your heart space, into that heart intelligence. I, 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 I'd like to look at the heart space. Don't misinterpret the heart space just being kind, kind, kind. No, it's, it's a completely different kind of intelligence. It's an intuitive intelligence. It's an imaginative intelligence. So this imagination is really, really coming through for me to allow ourselves to imagine again. And then, of course, there's the link back because what easier way to work with your imagination than in the dreams? It's a dream space. I mean, it's like the shit that comes up in your dream space. is like, what the hell? I would have never made that up otherwise, right? Well, exactly. It is a dream time awakening yeah but it, i think this is really that invitation yeah it's tough and, and this is where the tools come in that we've learned and that we've practiced and that we've become really good at and now we have to keep reminding ourselves of the simplicity of the very simple tools again it's like when all this energy comes in not all of the energy that we are perceiving is obviously you want to call it positive yeah you get the whole bloody collective up Domination and control is falling apart. Parts of us, of our soul shards are for, are that are domination and control are struggling with letting go of their identities. So this is now, is this my energy? Somebody said it, Herminia said it. Is this my energy or is this somebody else's? And even if it is part of your soul shard energy, well, it's time for that soul shard before we're letting go of our partners in the physical here. Let's look at all those soul shards that are still working against us. And we all have soul shards parts in our aspect, in, in, in the domination control. And they're still very much working this. It's time to integrate all of that. Integrate, integrate, integrate. Heal, let go. Well, and, and not just the soul shards from the past lifetimes, right? In domination and control. It's those parts of our multidimensional being that sometimes they're not working in, in conjunction with us. They're not on the same page. Yes. Absolutely. And then also remind yourself of the ones that are lost, that are screaming out to you. We still have quite a few. We off. I mean, how how often do you go out there and bring soul shards back? Go to the void space, right? When you're attracted to the void space, you know why. Even if you don't know what you're doing there, it's you're bringing all these soul shards, parts, and avatars back. Now, the dream that I mentioned in the beginning, you know, uh, thinking of that that girl I went to school with, and I only had the name and the eyes, and that was a soul a soul shard. That was a connection to a soul shot that I picked up out of fucking nowhere. And then it was so weird because in the dream, I connected her with somebody else I know. There's absolutely no connection. No connection. So why am I dreaming of this one and this one? They are that makes no sense whatsoever. So what was I doing? I was bringing them together on some level because on a different level than this reality, this lifetime now, they are connected. Um, and this is also where we have to, you know, understanding, understanding is no longer part of this imaginary process. Logic, we have to let go of sense. We have to let go of that logic and just allow ourselves to, to play in our intuition with that heart intelligence. And then you get, you get to a stage where, you know, if, if you make it up, well, who makes it up? 
and yeah, of course, the, the, it's not the parasympathetic, you know, coming in and talking shit and stuff like that. But then again, that's where the unentangled observer comes in and says, hang on a second. Is this really coming from here or is this coming from somewhere else? And that's just a, a side, little side conversation, a conversation. It doesn't have to go into, oh my God, depression, regression and, and, and all that kind of thing. It's, it's like really, I think we have to get used to really having conversation with all these different, vo all these different voices in our heads now without thinking we are going, uh, we, we've become, uh, you know, uh, bipolar or whatever personality disorder because we are, <laughs> to be honest, in this soul integration. We are all fucking, you know, we all have a personality disorder if you want to look at it from that perspective. That's exactly what we're doing now. We've got to bring it in. And when that is nicely done, now we'll keep going. We go as soon as we reach a certain level of, ha, oh, I'm there. Mm, no, you're not. Chuck, you back down again. <laughs> and then something else comes up. But the level of clearing now takes, it doesn't take that long anymore. And it's now fun. It's like, okay. It's almost like, oh, you know, playing uh, that game. What's that? Monopoly. Jail card. Okay, back into jail, that kind of thing. You know, then you spend a couple of days there and you relax and you just ground yourself again. You see, there's something else I want to ask you actually, because I was thinking about this the other day. Grounding. Grounding is taking on a different level of, let's call it understanding. What do you make of grounding now? I feel like it's necessary for me to get through the day. <laughs> Just physical grounding. That's just me. Okay. I agree I mean, with what Alfredo was saying that it's it's just moment to moment when you're in the you're going through your day and you feel, oh shit, I need to go ground myself. I need to do something. I need to go outside. I need yeah. to stand outside. I need to be where there's some actual dirt or soil. Um, I need to be in the air, in the atmosphere, and not within a, a, the, the structure of a building, you know. Um, you go for a walk, or you do anything outside. To me, that's connecting back and grounding myself. Tanya? Yeah. I mean, what I see is that the way we're grounding is changing, mm -hmm. right? So in this old operating system earth that we're moving away from, there was this energy of having to go down, right? Down out of your body to connect to earth mother or up out of your, you know, out of your body to connect with your source self and what i what i have observed as you know we're we're transitioning into this i call it new operating system where you call it what you want 5d so you know 5 to 12d crystalline grid um uh the eighth color of time um i think that we're we're opening up this multi-dimensional blueprint that has layers and layers and layers and to me, all of the grounding now is going through the heart, you know, and there's still sometimes where like this physical part of me will say, okay, I see I'm going to need to drop that grounding cord, you know, down into earth because uh, something is clearing on the land, right? And we work as that grounding cord to, to facilitate work coming from the higher realms. Um, you know, there has to be boots on the ground. Right. So there's there's that, too. But for me, all of the grounding, grounding that I've been doing is through my heart portal and, and opening up in that way. Yeah, I, I, I have the same sort of uh, sense that the it's almost like the root chakra, which is always was always very much, you know, um, depicted as the grounding through the root chakra. Right. 
Now, as we are going through the levels of transformation, just like uh, Tanya says, it's almost like the root chakra has moved, so it's moving up into the heart chakra. And it's like, it's a different kind of grounding as we're moving, as we are, and that's just a, uh, an exploration of myself. Maybe, maybe something for you guys to look at as well and see how that fits, how that works for you. It's like, as we, as we are starting to um, amalgamate our light bodies with the physical body, and bring the light back down into the into the physical body. It's the the grounding is different. Just like you know, Tanya has has really lovely explained just now. I'm I'm getting the same sort of thing. It's more like grounding into that new intelligence. The way I look at it, I'm looking from a completely new body, an upgraded body, upgraded vehicle. That's what I look at. Um, and then, you know, because, and then that upgraded vehicle, that mind, okay, no, that soul, spirit, and body, the, the tris, um, triskelion, that's what I saw on your, on your stuff, because I just found a triskelion, and I didn't know what it was, but I, I found it, and it had three legs, I found it at the, at the, at the mark, and I thought, what the hell is that, and it had, you know, the, the, snakes in between and I think it's the, the head of the Medusa or something and it's so interesting because the Medusa story itself she was a she wasn't she wasn't always a gorgon right a, a, an ugly looking uh, gorgon she was actually a beautiful woman and before she got raped yeah and then she had her armor around it and everything and then you got the the snakes the transformation of uh, you know the symbol of the snakes and then you know the three legs going into spirit soul and body and that's the embodiment and it's almost like um okay i lost now what i was going to say but anyway that kind of thing so it's coming into the heart a new kind of intelligence that is um working with that new kind of with the, with the second body it's a different body. And you know, we, we will start looking different as well. Over, over the years, we will start looking different. And yes, we wanna go into the youthing process. So yes, let's work with your telomeres and your mitochondria. That was basically the light thingy last time. And then of course, you know, uh, rejuvenating uh, through the through all those through the light coming uh, you know through the chakras through the glands and things like that okay I'm grounding adding to what what you and Tanya said when I think of grounding before it was more of me releasing energy and and anchoring myself into the earth and now I feel it's more of like a receiving Yes. So um, you know, where I used to ground, like on my porch or sitting on the ground, now I really want to be out in the sunshine or have my hands in the dirt. And it's not just me giving, it's me receiving. And it's, it's running in cyclical, you know, it's running in cycles. So I feel it's very cyclical running through my whole energy body. Yeah, exactly. And, and just like, like anyone else uh, said, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with grounding into the earth. We do that too. I was just, you know, I, I just started sensing a different energy around grounding the way we used to look at it, you know. Um, so just for you to explore and see how it works for you guys and see what it looks like. I, I feel like the grounding is, is like all around us now. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, you got to sit on the ground, you got to get your root chakras in there and stuff like that. I feel it's coming in. Uh, spherically from all around us mm -hmm. and then of course you, Tanya you're talking about the heart and then it uh, connects to directly to your heart so you're grounding in this energy that's coming um, from the galactic central sun um, and through our sun portal directly to our heart space so it no longer needs to be touching you know per se the ground itself but you're outside in the sunshine, like you're saying, Jen, um, and you're receiving all this grounding energy all around you. And everything is getting grounded like that. Your home, the trees, the plants, the animals, 
So every uh, life force is receiving this new type of grounding energy. And I like that. It's a bit like, uh, you know, Lana, what you said earlier on, or I don't know who said it now about uh, contracts being with the earth. Because remember, we, we talked about this before. I don't know. I think maybe AB mentioned it, that the earth is renegotiating all the contracts. So, with, the, with the hollow orders, I think. With, 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 with everyone, with everyone, I think. Oh, yeah, you mentioned it with the fairies and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Earth is renegotiating every contract now. So we, we're not having contracts with, we don't need governments. We don't need any of that. We're contracting directly with the Earth. And that's how it, it's supposed to be originally, because yeah. remember, Earth was the seventh dimensional ga galactic sea planet, and she wanted to be that way. She never had a chance to me. She never had an opportunity to be that planet. She always wanted to be. So it's really not fair to her to go back in some other direction than the direction that she always wanted to be. I mean, she should have a chance to be in her sovereignty and be that planet in my mind. Yeah. Because it was but, always taken away from her. Well, you know, I was thinking myself about what Lana said um, about the Sura uh, grounded. It's kind of my it's like a, everything is right there as to us. For example, this morning I was <clears throat> feeling like a kind pain in my uh, right hands and I put it in the ground and I visualize it like the energy of coming to go to the areas asking her to help me to feel better because I was doing my exercise in the morning. I used to do like uh, the integrity exercises every morning and then I was feeling the pain. I put it, my hands on the ground and I asked her to help me and instantly I saw the color, you know, coming like a, coming from my hands to her to her heart and, you know, uh, instantly like a visualization and then uh, the big challenge I feel for myself is that we are constantly um, reprogrammed to see what happened next, what happened next. I was thinking today I had to do like a few, uh, five, six different things. And then it was like it's getting over, over past to doing my exercises and take the shower and get breakfast because we started getting worried about it. So what a minute. It just now, it just now, you know, like pushing myself to remember myself. It just now, I went outside to the to the porch and I looked at the, the birds, I, I looked at the water, I looked at the trees. I said, it just now, it just now, you know, pushing myself to remind myself, I look at my surrender, be inside my body because that's having my big challenge. I always look at you know, flowing out, looking outside. And then uh, in the sunshine, when it was coming out this morning, I went out, put my face, asked, and then I remember Andrew said that the, the song is uh, another photo. And I looking to connect with those things, simple little thing, because I had to constantly, not jumping the one week ahead, one month ahead, what's going to happen, you know, trying to push myself to stay here now. <laughs> what matters now, what the essential is now, what I have to do right now. Do my breath or whatever, whatever. No worry about what I have to do at two o'clock, three o'clock. And having the challenge, but I'm catching myself a little more now in that one. It's really, it's amazing, I gotta say, because it's a big challenge. <laughs> and that's how it starts, Harmenia. You have to catch yourself doing it um, on a daily basis. And then mm -hmm. after a while, you get better at it. And then when you wake up mm -hmm. in the morning, the first thing you think about is not what what am I going to have for breakfast mm -hmm. or where do I have to go or what do I have to do uh, for work today or something like that you mm -hmm. just do what Andrew says the first 10 minutes you know you try to remember your dreams mm -hmm. and integrate your dreams and not worry about the rest of the day take that 10 minutes for yourself you know but you have to um, always check yourself um in the morning when you wake up and it gets better. And mm -hmm. for all those listeners who will be listening to this later who doesn't understand, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And after years of practice, and it will take years, you'll get, mm -hmm. you'll get there. It will yes. become natural to you. 
Yes. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Armenia. No, I said thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I mean that's a that's such a good reminder. I, I think that we're all works in progress, right? We're all all on different stages of our journey, except we're having you know sort of a shared experience with Earth, you know, shifting the way she is. But it's a step by step process. You know, we can't eat the giant buffet in one bite, right? We got to take little bites and little sips, and oh, I'm gonna take a little bit of that, and oh, isn't that interesting? You know, and and for me, I I love that you know the energy of the sun. And one of my daily practices is to, you know, just stand and and really, you know, do like a quick blink, and then feel those like the rays, the way they shine out from the sun, and and aligning with that portal of the sun within my heart, and feeling those rays, you know, shine out from my heart into my body on a cellular level, you know, and so that's been a really great, you know, little moment by moment, day by day practice to help me, you know, connect, connect mm -hmm. to the universal flow of energy and just be present with what I, you know, with who I am and what I have to do and not always what's next, what's now, but there is that, you know, strategy and planning where you know you're casting casting that forward into your future and then walking right to it mm -hmm. one thing that Alfredo about... said that really has stayed with me is kind of still feeling that shame of things that we've done before who we used to be but when you think back about what's transpired since then you've alchemized all of that shame blame and guilt by taking on responsibility and being accountable for who you are and you've metamorphosed into what you are now. So you're not that person anymore. It's really a beautiful story of alchemy to think about who we've been before and what we've done since then to transform ourselves and feel the ray of light that we are and, and know how to master our energy and our frequency. So that, that, that stayed with me since you said that, Alfredo, and I, I would look at it in a different perspective because you're, you're not that same person now. You really are. Your energy is beautiful. Your energy is an inspiration for people that really want to have that kind of passion for life and for their soul growth. Mm -hmm. So I would honor that. Thanks, Jen. I, I need, it's nice to hear that. To be honest, I've never, seen, I've never seen a nasty energy in you. I, I actually, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? But anyway, I'll I'm aware that. of it. No, I'm, I'm aware of my actions, and I need to be more responsible. Okay. I got unhealed traumas that I'm just like, okay, Fredo, emotional attachments to the mind. Get mm. go back to the heart. No, I. I mean, I guess only I know, and I'm sure people with more advanced <laughs> awareness, like Andrew, that's, I always have this subtle fear about talking with Andrew, because I asked him to roast my ass one time, I was like, oh, I want you to tell me all my hard truths, and he just, like, totally blew my awareness, like, through the roof, I was like, whoa, and it's just like, we're talking with Andrew, it's like facing a truth, you know, a truth about yourself, and, and sometimes it, it happened so long ago, but it was, it was such a hard pill pill to swallow you know just that that bitter truth what have you done with that information you know you've bettered yourself and we all have shadow sides we all have we're not all love and light you know we all have balance so what do you do with that i just go uh, oh go Oh, just I just want to move forward with more awareness and more mm -hmm. responsibility, not just to myself, but my my immediate family, because the family is where it's the the core of it all. I mean, it's like if I mean, for me, it is it because if, you know, think, I, I know this, I realized, too, because a lot of my emotional triggers were are within the morning, you know, and with the morning, I'm not acknowledging because I'm caught up in the mind, like do this, get the kids to school, you know, do that, got to like rushing around I don't <laughs> the, the... Okay, so... I, I just I'm talking about my own stuff but um but uh 
Go ahead, Martina. I don't want to force. No, there's just a couple of things I want to say before I forget. Um, I'm already forgetting. Maybe I shouldn't be saying it because my body is quite interesting. It shuts me up <laughs> when I have to. Um, no, okay, balance, yeah, shadow. They'll never go away because remember, at this level of our awareness, we are no longer just working ourselves, we're coming back to the collective. So any nasty parts that we perceive in ourselves, they're not gonna go away. It's that old little thing, what we did, we did before, they're not gonna go away. I've, you know, It's like, okay, do I wanna look at them or not? It's a completely different way of looking at it, yeah? We can all be murderers, we can all kill somebody. Yeah. We can be nasty bitches, nasty bastards. We can all do that. Yeah. So starting from that perspective, it already <coughs> takes away the, the judgment. We've all got it in us. We've done it. We've demonstrated mm -hmm. over lifetimes. All right. That doesn't mean that we have to choose it now. Mm -hmm. That's a very different energy. Number one. Number two, I was thinking, when those little bastards come back up, Look at them from a soul perspective. It's an unhealed version of yourself. Um, your co consciousness has gone awry, basically. So what I usually do when those little shits come out, I'm so okay, line them up in front of me. So, okay, cool. Line up in front of me. Let's have a chat. What do you require? Some want a little hug and then they shut up and go. Some need a bit more healing. Some have a message for me. Some have a message for somebody else. Yeah. So it's very, it's nice to have this ability to dissociate from yourself. Look at it as the uh, you know, unentangled observer. Acknowledge the part in yourself and line them up. You can do this right now. Line them up. How many destructive shards, versions, uh, parts, do you still have? More than 50 or less than 50? And be honest, more than 500 or less than 500? Not all of them are going to come forward right now. Just line them up. Okay, cool. Get out here. Let's chat. Who wants to be cleared? Send them back to whence they came from. Never come back to this body, this reality again. Send them back to whence they came from, never come back to this body, this reality again. Send them back to whence they came from, never come back to this body, this reality again. Now you've already cleared the majority of them because all they wanted was your permission to fuck off. Mm. And you've got, you got to use the F word sometimes because some of them are quite persistent little bees. Yeah, that's where the intensity comes in when you work with entities, parts of yourself that's gonna, they've, they've gone awry. And then you got the other ones. There are a couple of, some of them are ancient. Look at them. Look at them. Ancient, fragile, starving, bleeding. They want something. They want a little bit of recognition. Acknowledge them for the work they've done for you, for the fighting they've done for you when you were still in the warrior mode. In the karmic warrior mode, not the dharmic warrior mode. Give them a hug, give them a kiss, give them a healing. Do whatever you have to do. Thank them. Forgiveness. Yes, some people do forgiveness. I don't seek forgiveness in any of that. Just see whatever. They've done the job for you because that's what was required at the time. <laughs> It was a kind of protection that you don't no longer require from a place of sovereignty. Now they can go, send them. And some of them want to hang around. Okay. If they are a contribution to you, let them hang. Until they're no longer a contribution, then you send them, let them go. And that's really a lovely way of looking at it. And that, that's clearing like this. It's not judgment in any of that. There's just looking what is, what, what is required here. We need to get out of this idea of judgment, okay? We need to redefine shit, Jesus. We need to redefine grounding. We need to redefine judgment. 
we're no longer judging here. We're having an awareness of what is required. So just do whatever is required. You're a healer, you're a teacher, you know what to do. Let them go. Hmm? And let go of the idea of having to be perfect, right? Yeah. That's the fun of it. Enjoy being, you're having been the rebel. You don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, perfection. I've been a slave to perfection, I think. <laughs> so just beat myself up if I'm not doing it the perfect ideal way that I think right. it should be. Love is not perfect. If love is just honest, you know. Love is none of that. Love is the fabric of existence. <laughs> or even grander. <laughs> Let go of love idiocy. Yeah. Love is the fabric of existence. We're here because of love. Love is consciousness. But fuck all to do with relationships or how we treat ourselves. Let go of that. Redefine love for yourself. You are love. Otherwise, you've been, you wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> right? And even if yeah. you go out there and, and shoot the next uh, the neighbor, you're still love. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's got fuck all to do with this. Mm -hmm. It's just been so indoctrinated and misappropriated and misidentified so that we would obviously judge ourselves to the hilt. Yeah. Not necessary. Mm -hmm. You have your awareness now. With awareness, you can be and do whatever is required in the moment. Of course, you're not going to shoot anyone. Yeah. <laughs> not necessarily, unless he wants to shoot you first. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. You got to know it's awareness. That's mm -hmm. required. What is required right now? Do I have to be nasty now? It, do I have to tell my child off right now? Is this required for the greater evolution of her soul, his soul, my soul? Is this coming? Yeah, well, then you've got to do it. It's choice. Everything is not choice. Anything that doesn't allow you guys to perceive, not be and receive that, receive that because we are still taking on all the crap from the collective, let's just you know, all of that. Let it go. It doesn't work for this energy anymore. And this is the thing. We gotta redefine willpower. We gotta mm -hmm. redefine courageousness. We gotta redefine every single energy that we have worked with because it's all different. We are no longer living, well, the way we used to. We are no longer creating the way we used to. This is the waking up what we're doing. We could have woken up to this, you know, a couple of years ago, but we are obviously just waking up to it now. So fantastic. <laughs> Let's wake up to this now. Let's redefine everything. And, you know, Martina, uh, it's interesting because when you mentioned that, I was remember, there's one of the book from Carlos Catanera, uh, <clears throat> Tasha Abelard, uh, when she met, um, Clara and, uh, and she started, you know, telling her his story about, you know, the suffering with her family and how their family don't love her and, you know, the drama. And mm -hmm. she said uh, something that her, um, her, her master told her, um, Clara, that was be then, now is now, and now it's only time for freedom. And every time I had those, I was using it for a long time because I had you know, a lot of, you know, guilt in it coming and, you know, all those regrets that I was so stupid. I was, you know, I shouldn't do that. You know, all that stuff I used to then put that in my mind and visualize and say to myself, Armenia, that was then, now is now, and now it's only time for freedom. And I keep saying myself to you, and, you know, because the mind keep, you know, hitting and hitting and hitting. I don't know, no, you should be, uh, um, you should be afraid, you should be uh, scared, you should, because those are the energy that the system fit from, right? And then I, when I catch myself with a thought, I keep saying, repeating that again. Armenia, that was then, now is now, and now it's only time for freedom. I keep saying and saying until whoop. It disappeared and then I noted that now with Alfredo mentioned that it's so and, and you know what even even that is a judgment I've got to pull you up on that now is yeah. now is now yes whatever is required and sometimes yes. freedom is not required mm -hmm. yeah 
Uh-huh. Right, exactly. That's a, that's a good point. Yes. Yeah. However, that's and that moment that hurt me too. Positive judgments, they are equally taking us out of out of balance and equilibrium. Yeah. yeah. At, yeah. at that time, that's duality. Mm-hmm. Well, I think in the, at that time, it was helping me to get out of the, the hoop, you know, exactly. where I was. Exactly. Now I have to expand in different, you know, that was in that moment. Mm-hmm. Look at, look at the, the example of the rebel, yeah? Mm-hmm. I think we've all had an experience with the rebel energy. Now, the rebel was hugely important. Okay, let me speak about myself. When I was younger, I needed that rebel energy in order to survive. Because mm-hmm. if I would not have rebelled against what was happening in my life, I would probably not be sitting here. So <laughs> yeah. I needed that rebel energy. Now I'm now at the level in a stage in my in my evolution where the rebel does not serve me anymore. Mm. But you know, over the years, it got really strong. It got really strong. It got so strong that I remember a couple of years ago, there's a zebra crossing, yeah, crossing, just where the bus station is. And the, U- the, the law in the UK and everywhere else, I suppose, is that cars need to stop, right? Now, my awareness knew that the cars will not stop. The rebel said, fucking you go, you go, you go, because the law says they should be stopping, right? And do you know how many times I did that? Yeah, and then they screech and stop, and I was like, you know, I mean... And then one day I realized, what the hell are you doing? You're putting yourself in danger just because the law says that you don't even give a shit about the law. Yeah, it's the rebel actually putting you in danger. It's no longer working for you. I no mm-hmm. longer need a rebel. I've barely, right? <laughs> that's the energy. Yeah. And that's just an example of it. We're still using something old. Like, oh, you don't love me anymore, Lala. You said, oh, God, you don't love me. You know, right? But what am I actually talking about? It's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah? Love. Well, well, I, I really find love ages ago. And now I'm, oh, I'm not, you don't love me. What am I doing? Yeah, and this is where we have to pick ourselves up as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think really um, feeling you know, that rebel energy for me growing up, you know, I, I heard my dad, I had a conversation with my dad one time about, he was talking to my mom's mother and they were, you know, discussing, arguing about something. And he said, well, certainly you can't believe everything that your mother believed. And she said, yes, I do. I believe everything exactly, everything exactly. And I, that always makes me laugh because, you know, myself, like I had to really rebel against that energetic structure within the ancestral lineage, right? And of course that came through conflict with my mother, right? But also, you know, when you're like rebelling against that ancestral lineage, what are you supposed to be? What does it mean to be a, a, a woman, you know, someone's daughter, someone's sister, someone's mother, someone's lover, right? And that ancestral lineage is saying, this is exactly how you're supposed to behave. This is what you're supposed to do, right? And if you are not doing this, then there's something wrong with you. So, you know, for me, I created a lot of, you know, rebellion in my younger years, you know, just to, just to shake the foundations of that, right? And it also gave me courage to be myself, right? No holds barred. You know, I've thought a lot about what you're just saying there about ancestral energy, Um, the ancestors saying to you, it has to be done this way. It has to be done this way because it's always been done this way. You have to live this way. And it shifts from generation to generation to generation. And it never changes. But I've been thinking about that. It's like, do we have to? Do we have to always do it the way the ancestors did it? What if the ancestors were wrong because they were also yeah. under domination and control? They were confirmed to a certain way of living. 
do we have to, in this dream time awakening moment, do we have to be like that? Can't we change it the way we see fit and best for our future, for the future generations? Or do we have to be stuck in the way the ancestors did it? Well, Lana. Yeah, share your we, thoughts. <laughs> we are the ancestors. We are the part, the ancestors are us. The sharks, the parts, the avatars that we are integrating. So, and they're dead. True. Yes. We are the ones that calling the shots. We are the avatars. That's what the I am avatar integration is all about. And, and that my... brings the rebel back in you. <laughs> no, that's just <laughs> common sense in my life now. Yeah, right. But right? the experience of the rebel is always there. That when you need that experience, you know how to tactfully uh, bring that rebel uh experience okay. out but in a more uh genteel way okay well for me that would not have been if i would have said the whole thing in uh, in light language that would have been the rebel mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because i i'm using my 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 rebel now i've he is retasked he is helping me to come out with complete completely out of the box but from a, from a, he's helping me. I, I had to retask him. I didn't want to let him go because I had so much fun with him. I said, okay, cool. So what, what can we retask? Is it, okay, just come out with shit that just people are going to think you are absolutely crazy. We're like, okay, cool. That's what he's helping me with now. That, what I just said was what I have learned, literally remembered through the work that I have done. And uh, gratitude to, to AB on this one to allow me to see the element of the soul. You know, what does the soul actually mean? Having all these different parts, shots, and avatars, and they integrate them all. We are the ancestors. We're not standing on anybody's fucking ancestor. We are integrating them. The ones that are telling us what to do, Lana, those are the ones send them packing. No, yeah. just it. Thank you. Share the information. Work with me in cooperation, in communion, in union, and harmony. Or get the fuck out of my system. Yeah, because what we're doing right now, we're setting the precedence for the future generations. Yeah. And we remember Andrew always said we are the best of the best of the best in the last twenty-five million universal generations to be here right now, to be living in this great dream time awakening. So we were chosen to be the ones to be present here now to make any changes and to set the foundation for the future generations and so what that's that, a, what that that's means really you're absolutely right it means that we also we are not telling the future we're not becoming the nasty ancestors to the future now no no we're not at all calling them in and say hey guys what do you want to create let's do it together what right. see can I plant now that you're gonna, you know, uh, work with in 500 years time? We're gonna be different ancestors to them, right? Because mm -hmm. we're gonna bring it, because we have this multidimensional awareness that we're working with the past and the future. We're calling the shots. We, we are the mediators. We're all mediators to our own soul. That's the responsibility that we have. And if we ever need the rebel to Sometimes help us along, it will be there for us. Absolutely. To... Ooh, I'm a rebel for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so every part, every part, you know, has a has a has, has a shadow, right? Mm. So we gotta use them. When it does it's still like like changing the suit you know i need the, the fighting one i need the loving one i need this yeah. <laughs> the reverse one <laughs> there's gratitude in all of that yeah there's an yeah. honoring a witnessing uh and understanding and all yeah. of that you'll be like a changing your hat i had a hat now for so short you know yeah. 
But if you, if you think about it, right, it's the rebel that brought us into the great dream time awakening. If we were not that awesome rebel, we would not be here right now having this conversation with each other. Very true. Willpower, courageousness, you know, determination is often, you know, associated with the rebel. Being different, looking outside the box. Absolutely. And when I say rebel, I mean rebel in a good way, in a good sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. not stepping on the journeys of others anymore, but using that rebel um, uh, experience, the DNA that we accumulated from that experience that is going to shift us into the future in a, in a, in a beautiful way. The Chester, well, rebel and the Chester, bring them together, let them work. Yeah. You know, Lana, you're making me sick now because I have a situation with my family that for three generations, they have been celebrating like one of those saints, you know, that, you know, every time at a special saints that supposedly saved them 200 years ago, whatever. And uh, my mother is the one that now had the uh, carry on dust. <clears throat> and becoming the older one, maybe <laughs> she might be thinking that I got to carry on that tradition and for me that's zero 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 then I know it's something that when the time comes <clears throat> I know that I'm going to be disappointed the whole family but I don't care <laughs> I got to be laughing myself because they're going to you know say whatever they want to say about me that I know the the, the right you know Dora or you know the good of the family are supposed to keeping the tradition but for me that's that doesn't go he said no 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 i know that i had to break with that tradition it's a tradition for more than 200 years for it coming to me is no more you know and it's one of those challenges that i don't even worry about it because i know i step in my power and my knowingness i cannot follow the one that is blind <laughs> because it's, it's not that you don't tradition. care it's not hmm? that you don't care you do care but you want to change, you want to bring that tradition to an end because it doesn't yeah. serve the future you or the future right. generations of you. So you're gonna make you're gonna you're gonna say thank you very much for the service that you provided for 200 plus years in, in our ancestral line. But this mm -hmm. is where the box stops. This mm -hmm. is not you're not gonna be going into our future, right? Uh -huh. We're gonna yeah. make a change. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be the one, Harmania, who's going to say in the ancestral line, I'm the one that's going to make the change and I'm going to set a better future for the future generations. Yeah. That's so you're, going, you're going to make that turnaround and that's why you were born. It's the reason why you were born and be living in the dream time awakening. Mm -hmm. And that's, oh, that's why you met Andrew Bartzis, the, the galactic historian. That's why you've met so many people. <laughs> And you're having this conversation right now. <laughs> oh, God. That's a word set. You know, Lana, I will put it myself in that position. That's why you got it right there. <laughs> that was because I was thinking, in the beginning, it was a worry for me, but now I feel so free about that. And I don't even think about it. It's, it makes sense what you said, really. It is. It's all because all the people have been surrounded. And all the experience that I have been going through, that's true. Yes. You have to feel honored that you were chosen to be the one um, to make that transition, that change within your ancestral line. Really? And, you, and you, you put that foundation down right now because, you know, like the shaman stick, you take the shaman stick and you plant it into the ground, you know, the way they plant the flag on the moon and say, this is mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> never go back but you plant, your, <laughs> you plant your your shaman stick in the ground and say this is where the box stop i'm making a change in this ancestral line now wow that's very cool i didn't think about that one <laughs> yeah use your power use your your wisdom your intelligence the force within you you know like in star wars you're the force you know <laughs> uh, okay well I'll, I'll remember that when the time comes <laughs> Because, you know, it's the same when I talk with my mom sometimes because she comes from the old school as well. We have arguments at times, you know, and I will tell her things and she said, I don't want to hear about it. Let's let's switch the conversation to something else <laughs> because it's too much for her to take, you know, 
um, and yeah. she, she, she goes into cognitive dissonance. And so she doesn't understand, mm. and that's where I have to stop. And I can't continue. But I am the next generation after her. And I feel, you know, like I'm saying to you, be the, the one that is going to make the change within the ancestral line. And, and this, is, this is the perfect time because, as I said, we are in the Great Dream Time Awakening, the event. We are within the event itself. Mm -hmm. So do what you can do to the best of your ability to make the changes. Mm. Well, and, and maybe also to make it yours, you know, like what, what does, you know, that tradition in the family, okay, maybe you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Maybe there's a kernel of something that you love and appreciate and want to celebrate, right? And so how do you, how do you change that? for this moment of now, right? And springboard it into the future instead of dragging the past forward. Mm. Yeah. Do you know when you come in with choice, you teaching the lineage choice, that doesn't mean that they have to take on what you're choosing. They can carry on doing whatever they want, yeah? Your, your children, your children's children, they, they, if they want to carry on the traditions, they can do that too. All you are introducing is really choice. And that is the, uh, the contribution to your personal soul evolution and to the soul family as such. Because that's the main teaching that we are bringing forward in this awakening to allow our lineages and our soul families to realize that they have free will right mm -hmm. and the may and, and then look at it from a from a dna perspective because you know we know we we, we have this figure of 80 20 80 percent memories right so as you're changing the memories in your dna and you're letting go you're reducing that 80%. That's not a figure that is the same for everyone. That's just a ballpark figure, right? As you're letting go of that memory that is cluttering up your DNA, you are actually allowing now this light that is coming in to bring in new kind of information that, you know, we haven't even considered a possibility yet. Mm -hmm. So you're just making room by letting go what no longer works for you. You're choosing something else. And that doesn't mean if you choose not to do this now uh, for this, uh, for the next five years and, you know, in 10 years time, you think, ah, that was actually a cool thing. Well, then you just choose it again. It's the resistance that we need to take out because everything that is still, we are resisting is persisting on some energetic level. Mm -hmm. yeah well, for my point of view is because i had no service really in the from my point of view in the best of the family really there's no there's no uh collaboration integration you know the real love it's just a lot of division and and i it haven't show anything for from my point of view for yeah. them it's like the you know, it's like uh, somebody is a handicap and need a wheelchair or they crash it to work. Or for, for me, that doesn't doesn't need it at this point. And that's why we are born into soul families that don't necessarily work for us. Mm -hmm. Talking about the rebels. I mean, look at us. Who lives <laughs> in the same place still where the family is? Who has all this family? You know, we're choosing it. We can choose it or we cannot choose it. But why did we choose that uh, experience in the first place? Well, to allow ourselves to define, fortify our sovereignty rules. Step out of that muddy thing that we have to do everything together. We are this big family, family is everything. We define family. Mm -hmm. no issues with family i love i love my family but on my terms it's got to be my terms right yes yes mm -hmm. and it's the soul family that is coming to the forefront now right 
nobody talked about soul families in those days, in those lifetimes. It was all about family, family, because we didn't understand our multidimensionality. Now the, the soul family is coming forward. And it's like, oh yeah, this is now my family. Now I'm understanding family. Yeah. If you yes. are, if you're having, you know, a, a discussion like like we have, doesn't mean that we have to see each other every day. Doesn't mean that we have to think the same thing, that we eat the same thing, mm -hmm. we sleep in the same bed. No, we're just getting together to enjoy our differences, to celebrate our difference without judgment. Mm -hmm. That's what family is all about. That's the big puzzle that we are building. Everyone has to be the specific piece of puzzle in order to fit in. And if one is missing, we can't finish the puzzle. Yeah. Need all of them. Every single one of them. In their own time, because there is no time, right? We are not under time pressure. We're just playing with our little puzzles now. Okay. And, oh, that fits. Oh, that's so nice. So we <laughs> stand on the other side. Okay. And you know what it's like? You, anyone has done a puzzle you know you put i have so many times i love puzzles i push it not it has to go it has to fit it has to be no it's not there's a tiny 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 difference right and it was right on the other side missing I didn't see that right <laughs> or on the or on the floor under the or table on the floor, <laughs> you know or the bloody cabinet yeah. or something <laughs> had to bring yeah. it back from this from the void space there it goes <laughs> little cat paw <laughs> and then how difficult is it to let to put the puzzle back in the box or to let it go with one piece missing yeah yeah it's not looking everywhere everywhere every, you know it's gotta be somewhere it's gotta be somewhere and you forget that the joy was in just putting the puzzle together. Yeah. In piece. Yeah. It, it, it changes the way that your mind works when you're working mm -hmm. on a puzzle. Because you're looking at things in all different directions. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it causes you to look yeah. at things in a different way. That's interesting. You know, I had a vision long times ago when I was kind of very much lost than I am now. <laughs> uh, I had, you know, I was asking a question and then I was in a meditation with the group, uh, the Gnosis group at that time. <clears throat> and uh, the vision I had was like a glass, a, a glass that is uh, dropped in the floor and then it gets broken in thousand pieces. And that was my visualization about why we are all different, however we are together. Because any little piece of that um, glass that is missing, if I put it, like, let's say a glass of water, it will be able, the water going to leak because no matter how tiny little piece it is, it won't have retain the water inside. And that hurt me to go, to not go in competition and comparison myself to nobody <laughs> because I know everybody is neat. And that realization hurt me a lot. You know, all those problems of limitation and, you know, and um, worthless net, all the stuff that I grow up that visualization for me to understand everybody is important every, and that's why when i hear people everybody is important everybody is have value like andrew said you know for me it was it's easy to understand because when i had that visualization oh my god doesn't matter how big is my piece of the glass of water <laughs> or you know if it's missing a little one that's me i cannot retain water or any liquid inside and that's the way I see it. That doesn't matter how much I think is little my contribution. It doesn't matter the little one. It has something important to the whole. And that's the way I was managed to overcome a lot of limitations that I have in my life. And it was quite interesting. That's why I see everybody with the same value. It's very housing happening, you know. 
Mm -hmm. that also shows us that this is a individual awakening. And yes, we're coming together with the collective. As soon as our glasses are sort of taking shape again. Mm -hmm. There's still little leaks that, you know, we need to fix up and all of that. We just got to be careful that when we come in with our little leaks that the other collective stuff doesn't leak through. Not just our essence leaking out, it's the shit that's leaking in through those holes as well. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's a lovely way of looking at it, yeah. Very well put. <laughs> Very well put, yeah. Interesting. Beautiful. Great conversation, guys. Um, what I wanted to say was that if you know, if you use a lot of uh, GMO cornstarch and, and, and put it in your water, it will make your water nice and thick and je like a jelly and it wouldn't leak anymore. <laughs> oh, wow, man. <laughs> nice, love it. <laughs> you can get non GMO cornstarch too. <laughs> <laughs> it will what still be, it will still still be like jelly. And and then you drink. wouldn't want to drink it. <laughs> I mean, that's what they do for people when they get elderly and they can't swallow. They thicken up the water so they can. Drink oh, it. yeah, yeah. So they don't choke. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool, Lana. <laughs> So how this? I love this, Lana. How? I was just thinking how to plug up the hole. <laughs> yeah. When you can't find your it's your part charts and avatars to come in and plug up the holes, <laughs> you can use GMO cornstarch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Martina. <laughs> what? Go what ahead. What's she saying? Say again. You're saying something really cool metaphorically. To what is that up. corn starch? What is the corn starch? It's the thickening agent. No, I know, but what, what's, the metaphor, what's the metaphor? For it was what? just a joke. It was just a joke. I no, it was a superb joke. <laughs> it's a superb joke, but it's not a joke. Let's look at it. Well, there's the four. The metaphor I, four. I was thinking about the four phases of water in the moment um, that they talk about. And then <laughs> I'm thinking, how can you. Um, stop the, the the leakage if you have uh, holes in your glass I and mean, if you thicken it up then nothing would leak out you know it's the four phases of the water you know you can freeze the water you can thicken it up and you know whatever else uh, phases the water will go through steam and all that what is love. transformation what is love it? love what else trust i see Transformation, transformation of the state from solid, from liquid to solid, right? <laughs> and the glue that that keeping uh hold the the piece that doesn't leak, leak out. Give it more names. What's what that? Name? We've got love. What more names do it's we have? Like, it's like holding, trust. holding everything together. Trust. Yeah. Cho what else? Choice. Choice. What else? Alchemy. What else? Resiliency. Okay. Solidifying. Spirit. 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 Huh. <laughs> Fill it up. Fill it up. Get down. Get get down on it. So now we got it. Got, thanks, Lana. We got starch equals spirit. Fabulous. <laughs> Every time you, you, you have a hole somewhere, oh, cool. it. bring some spirit in. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's still malleable. It can still shift and move and wobble and stuff like that. So it's not frozen oh. like ice. <laughs> oh, if I had a pain in, my, in one of my foot, I had, uh, I had to fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> use, or use it for healing the hole. We don't have to find yes. it. Use for healing the hole and then importantly, send it all the way through because remember we are the conduits. Let me make a note here in my notebook about that one. Could you say it again, Martina? 
I like him. I can't okay. do that. Like what? Oh, bringing the spirit that through. Cornstarch. Spirit in cornstarch. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the irony too that it was you know how we demonize GMO corn, so use it to, to represent exactly. <laughs> Love cornstarch. Like <laughs> corn starch. Fantastic. Oh, See, this is cool. imagination. This is the next level of your imagination. Love that, Lana. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's I like that about cool. the, the demonizing the food because I feel like my diet, I'm always demonizing, oh, I can't eat the GMO food, I can't eat the pizza, I can't do this, and like just demonizing all these foods. And it's like, the food it, food to me, it, it's like sex, it's a pleasure. And it's like, I want to enjoy that food, I want to enjoy that pizza, enjoy that beer, you know, just absolutely. It, it's a good ex it's an experience, you know, it, mm -hmm. I don't want to rob myself of experiences, you know, just exactly. It's all Anyways, energy at the end of the day, yeah, yeah, it's all this energy, it's and how all light, whatever you know. Uh, it's yeah. all you know, how many people who have a lot of points of views about certain foods get sick mm -hmm. because of the resistance, yeah. because of the belief system that is actually creating it. I mean, that mm. takes us back, it's the, it's the belief system that creates our bodies and everything else. Exactly, exactly. That doesn't mean that we have to, you know, you know, just test is now the rebel. Okay, just give me this, I eat all of that. <laughs> Don't let the rebel, you know, like my rebel say, okay, fuck this out, oh, test it out. No, use your awareness, all right? Awareness trumps rebel. No, you're saying you're, you're saying spirit equals uh, cornstarch. But think yes. about this now. Think about how many um, different um, things that we eat have cornstarch in it. Oh, and like ninety-five percent. Think, think like about 95%. the yeah. Think about the plant itself, the corn plant that produces the the corn, and we can eat the corn, <clears throat> or we take the. Uh, the, the the starch out of the uh, the corn you know itself and uh, then that goes into some form of processing that then goes into other foods now you're saying spirit equals cornstarch think about how that gets alchemized into the spirit itself gets alchemized into different foods that we eat on a daily basis yeah the spirit is being spread it out you know into absolutely Spread some uh, spirit on your on your bread tomorrow morning. <laughs> spirit on the bread. <laughs> <laughs> too much. It's too sweet. Okay, no, don't do that. You uh -huh. Spirit thickens up your uh, soup. Spirit thickens up your gravy. You know, yeah. or your stew or whatever. It's all cornstarch you put in there. Now yeah. it's making me think of communion at church, right? Like the consummation of the body. And blood and spirit, yeah. Yeah. Even when you make an apple pie, you put cornstarch there to thicken up that, you know, liquidy stuff in the in the pie to hold the pie together. But just imagine mm. how beautiful the food will taste when you start spreading spirit on it or cook with spirit. Obviously yeah. not tequila, but you know what I mean. So let's now let's now take this this um, idea of spirit equals cornstarch and we transform this GMO cornstarch that has been demonized into something beautiful. And let's see yeah. that, that it is that as though we're spreading spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's transform it into something that is positive for the world, for our future generations, and for our own future selves. And that out creating something mm -hmm. that they're negative that they're doing into a positive. Yes. And we yeah. change it to something positive now. So we'll always refer to cornstarch as spirit. Mm -hmm. We said the spreading the spirit. We're using the spirit to thicken up our soups and our stews. Yep. 
the rebel, the rebel being put back into. <laughs> and at least, uh, Lana, keep that to yourself because <laughs> otherwise <laughs> you're gonna have like all the fucking uh, projections and at you, and it's gonna kill you next time you eat your stuff. <laughs> 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 so you have to ha work extra hard, like yeah. else knows, to stay afloat with all this projection at you. And remind yourselves, whoever has projections at you, it's a form of jealousy because they can see a potency in you that you have not acknowledged yet. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's been projected at, you are good. You're yeah. good. You know, Andrew had a program, I think it was before yesterday on Tuesday We are uh, Davis. And then another guy, I don't remember his name, that he, they were talking about the middle fingers. <laughs> Anytime that you. Yeah, yeah, it was yesterday? Yeah. Oh, my God. I lost in the time. <laughs> 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 Any case, they were talking about the, put it the, the middle finger. Maybe that's why you had to do Lana. <laughs> the spiritual middle finger. <laughs> the holy instrument. Mm -hmm. The holy instrument. I like that. <laughs> mm yeah but think about if you take if you take the the, the cornstarch and you make this uh, jelly boat right you're know, saying when the storm comes you can you can sail in your your spiritual uh, uh cornstarch jelly boat and keep yourself afloat. I, I think we got her onto something now <laughs> just like build a whole new city out of cornstarch <laughs> for our tribe yes lana Go start creating. We join oh, yeah. in space. Jelly is corn stars island. <laughs> <laughs> Lana Island. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is how this alchemy shit works, guys. Now we got it. <laughs> now we got it. <laughs> Fantastic. Laughter is the healing medicine. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My goodness. So we're coming up to two hours. Well done, crew. Well, nice to see everyone. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, mean, I, I wasn't, you know, Bye -bye. with all this uh, separation of density, with all the people going through all their stuff, I'm thinking, okay, well, let's yeah. see who's still showing up here. You know? Yeah. But, Tanya, yeah. And Tanya looked like a pink color in her face today. It was like she was a spot, yeah. like a, a very uh, beautiful, Beautiful, purify energy. Uh, her face looks like, <laughs> like a picking, like a picking color. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I went for a hike with my dog earlier, so oh, it's warm. Nice. It's really warm here today. The last oh. yesterday and today, so oh, that's uh, beautiful. Gets, when it's warm in the city, it just bounces all over the place because of all the cement. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and you have that uh, your blood uh, oxygenated got oxygen in your uh, blood string it looked very nice your face <laughs> thank you thank you uh, fabulous well, okay, i'm gonna leave so. you with i'm gonna leave you with um one sentence if you're not feeling lost you're doing something wrong <laughs> <laughs> now judge yourself for that all right okay. Okay. If it's if, it, if it's, I feel lost. If you don't feel lost. I, I don't feel lost. You oh. still got some work to do. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, guys. Love you lots. And I'll see you bye. next week. Okay, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B